Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make huge synths just like Rusty. So, as usual, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, they'll be available. Let's get started. So, this is a loop you heard in the intro, we're at 150 BPM, and the first sound we have here is this chord synth, which sounds like this. So, the way I made the sound was using analog, but I will show you the chords first. So, the MIDI looks like this. And basically what these are, is these are all just basic major and minor triads, but I've inverted them. So the inversion that I've done here is I've taken the root notes, and I put them down two octaves. So if I put that up, one, two, there's back to normal. And then I've taken the third and put it up an octave as well. So this would be like a basic minor, C-sharp minor triad. That's what it sounds like. And then yeah, so just to backtrack here, Put that up an octave, put that down two octaves, and there you go. That's how I did it. It's really nothing too crazy, but what you get when you do this is you get this much bigger and just broader sound. Like, the chords sound so much bigger, and there's more sort of definition between the notes as well. Like, you can kind of hear more space between them, and it makes it a bit clearer. Um, and this is a technique Rusty uses a ton. Like, as far as inverting your chords go, he is definitely, or inverting chords go, he's definitely, like, a master of that. And, again, it's just such a really good way to get like this much bigger and broader sound out of your chords. Um, so the only exception here I will also point out is the second chord, which I only moved the root note down one octave for that one. But yeah, that's just kind of like, you know, what sounds good there. So then for the synth, like I said, I made this with analog. What we've got here is we've got two saw waves, and those are going into this low pass filter, and the low pass filter is actually not really doing what you would expect. So basically, if I turn this off, this is what it sounds like. And if I turn it on, you can hear it sounds so much brighter. So basically, for some reason, when you turn this off, it's not really bringing through that like bright, bright high end on top of this, which I did want to have in here. So yeah, just by having this filter frequency like almost all the way open, but not quite, and then having a resonance boost there, you get that nice kind of like crispy high end on top of it. So then after that, I've got the amp envelope set like this, pretty simple, and that's it for inside of analog. So the first effect I have on here is this frequency shifter, which I'm using to do those sort of pitch bends that you hear at the end of every two bars. They sound like this. That thing. So the reason why I use the frequency shifter to do this, I've done this on all four of these layers that are kind of following the chords as well. And the reason why I use the frequency shifter to do this is because if you go into the MIDI here, and trying to audit or modulate this, I guess it's called, with this envelope, um, what can happen is a lot of times it's just kind of wonky. Like, you'll, like, pause it on, like, a part where it's pitching down, and then the MIDI will just freeze on that, and then for the rest of the time, your project file is all messed up. So, yeah, it can just be kind of a hassle. So that's why I did it this way. And it sounds a little bit different, but I think it sounds kind of cool. It gives it kind of like a cool texture. So the key here is just automating that fine tuning. If you f if you automate this main frequency, like that doesn't really sound like it, but the fine tune is how you get that nice pitching down kind of sound. So then after that, I've got this chorus here. You can see it's set like this. It's not too heavy. The second layer here is really the one that's like really wide, but I did want to give this a bit of that kind of chorusy texture. And you can hear when I turn it off. It's just not as lush without it. So then after that, I've got a bit of reverb just to give it some more kind of stereo width. And then we have this auto pan. And what this auto pan is doing is I'm using this to do that sort of like pumping effect that you hear on the chords. You can hear when I turn that on. So basically, the way I'm doing this is, like I said, using an auto pan. What we've got here is I've turned the phase down to zero. And this makes it mono, so it's only affecting the volume, basically. Then after that, I set the rate to quarter notes so it has the corner note kind of pulse there. And then I've changed the shape here to a saw wave. So it comes on the sine wave by default. And then the last thing that I've done is I've just inverted it. So this is what it looks like by default. Not quite the same effect. But then when you invert it, you get that nice kind of like pumping effect. And that's something Rusty does a lot. So I wanted to kind of show you a way to do that with just Ableton stuff. So then the next layer that we have here is the second sort of auxiliary, I guess you would call it, chord layer. It sounds like this. So you can hear, this one is much more of like that kind of wide, like big, sort of lush chord sound. And that's really the goal here. Like, this on its own is pretty powerful. 
But here's what the whole mix sounds like with just that. And then listen to when I bring in the second layer. Like I said, it just gives you that like big, wide kind of chord sound. And then the key here is just that it's so high pass that it's not going to get in the way too much of that other layer. Like they can both kind of coexist here. So the way I made the sound is playing the same chords that I showed you on that last synth. But I made this one with analog. And what we've got going on here is you can see I've got the square wave and I've got a saw wave. The saw wave is detuned a little bit. And on the square wave, I've got the pulse width at 74%. And then I've got LFO 1 moving it. So this just helps to give it some motion. Obviously, because it's moving it. But yeah, it just helps to kind of like bring this sound to life a little bit. Like it makes it more than just like a stagnant sound that's just playing like one thing the whole time. And again, it just kind of helps to bring it to life a bit. It's very subtle, but if I turn it off, you'll hear it. And then, yeah, when I bring it in there, you can see, like I said, it's very subtle, but it just helps to give it that kind of, like, movement and bring the sound to life a little bit more. Then after that, I've got this high-pass filter, which is actually doing quite a bit if I turn it off. And then back on. So you can hear I'm really just using that to, like, carve out that high end where I want this synth to be. So it's so wide, you don't want it to be too much in the low end. Like, it's kind of like the lower you go in the frequency spectrum the less wide you want your sounds to be. So, yeah, since this is so much in the high end, the higher you go in the frequency spectrum, the wider you want your sounds to be. So that's kind of the goal here. Um, then after that, I've got the amp envelope set like that, and that is it for inside of analog. Then I've got this frequency shifter on here, same one that I showed you on the last thing that's just doing the pitch bend. After that, I've got a bit of chorus. So this one you can see is much more intense than it was on that first thing. Since this one is kind of like the wide one, yeah, that's why I have that on there. Then after that, I have the Haas effect. And the Haas effect is, if you don't know, a really, really good way to give your sound some more, like, stereo width. Basically, the way it works is you take a sound, and you get, like, the left signal and the right signal, and you move one of them forward a little bit. In this case, I think I moved the left ear. Um, so I guess this would be my left. I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, and you move one of them forward a little bit, and then what happens is because you're hearing the same sound, but twice at two separate times in each ear, you're getting like this big stereo image and your brain just kind of hears it as one very, very wide sound. So the way I did this here was using this audio effect rack. Basically, I've got a right chain, which is panned completely to the right and has no effects on it. And then on this left chain here, it's panned completely to the left. And I have a, stereo, a simple delay. And what I'm doing with the simple delay is I have it in the mono setting, so it's just one delay signal. And then you can see I've got the time at 10.3 milliseconds and the dry wet is all the way up. So that's what's moving this forward. Like I was saying, like, this is just moving it 10 milliseconds forward and giving you that wide sound. If I turn it off, you can hear it's not nearly as wide. So then after that, I have an auto pan doing that same kind of like pumping effect that I showed you on the first chord synth. Um, and then I have a bit of reverb, which might seem a bit odd here, but since this is so wide and stereo, I wanted to have some, some reverb after the auto pan to like just kind of I guess give it a bit more space. And yeah, then the last thing I have on here is just an EQ8 cutting out the low end, just doing the final thing there. Because, like, I, I have the high pass on the synth, but there's a lot of effects here that can kind of create low end. So, yeah, I just have that on there at the end, cutting that out. And that is it for the second chord synth. So the next sound we got here is this bass, which sounds like this. So the bass is made of two layers. We have sort of a mid bass and then a sub. And they're both playing the same MIDI. They're just playing the bass notes from the chord MIDI that I showed you a bit ago. And yeah, so for the mid bass, I made this using operator. What we've got here is I've got a saw wave and then I've got a bunch of other sine waves after it, just doing some FM. You can see I've got these at various different octaves, like the chorus pitch on the first one is at 0.5 and then here it's on two. Just kind of what sounded good with this one. But yeah, this is kind of like a nice way to create interesting bass sounds because with a bass, since it's so low, you have a lot more room to add higher harmonic content on top of that. That's why you can make such big, like, sort of juicy, like, bass sounds. But you can't really do a lot with sound design with, like, a lead as far as, like, adding harmonics to it. This is why. is because when a sound is so low, you have a lot more room to add harmonics on top. So, yeah, basically all that goes to say, you can do a lot of cool stuff with FM synthesis for these kind of sounds, and especially, like, if you want...
something kind of unique like this is definitely the best way to go. So then after that, I've got this amp on here. And what this is doing, as you can see, I just have it on the heavy setting. This is distorting it. So here's what it sounds like without that. Kind of like an electro 2011 bass. Um, but then when we add this amp, it gives it that nice kind of like hard sound. So then after that, I've got a frequency shifter just doing that same little pitch bend at the end of every two bars. And then I've got this saturator. And the saturator is just set like this. I've just got a bit of drive. Um, it just kind of helps to beef the sound up a bit. And really tie it all together at the end of the chain. Then after that, I've got an auto pan doing another one of those sort of quarter note pumps. And then we've got an EQ8 just cutting out the low end. Then for the sub bass, it sounds like this on its own. And the way I made this was using operator. So I've just got a sine wave here. Really simple stuff. And then I've got that going into the frequency shifter, which is, yeah, doing that same pitch bend that I've shown you on the last three layers. And then I've just got a bit of saturation. And the saturator is set like this. I've got a bit of drive. And then I've got the sinoid fold with the bass frequency up a little bit. And yeah, this is just kind of giving it a bit more texture. It helps to kind of glue it to the other bass more. Like if I have this, you can hear they sound like one, but if I turn it off, they just don't really gel together as well. Then the last effect I have on there is just this auto pan, again, doing that same quarter note pump type effect. And that is it for the bass. So then the last layer that I have here is this lead, which sounds like this. So I'll talk about the notes a little bit. It's kind of just playing this like dynamic, I guess you would call it, pattern. Um, the fifth in the key, I started on G sharp here, which is the fifth of C sharp, which is the key where we're in C sharp minor. And yeah, not really a whole lot to say here, but you just want to aim for like a lot of energy. Like if you really want to cap capture that rusty sort of vibe, try doing stuff like this type of pattern where it's got like kind of a 16th note feel. And it's very fast and it's not like such, it's not just like long held out notes. Like I said, like it's very quick. Very dynamic, and it's just kind of really moving this along and giving it a lot of energy. So for the sound on this one, I made this with analog. And what we've got going on here is we've got a saw wave, and we've got a square wave. And on the saw wave and the square wave, both, you can see, I've got this pitch envelope, so it's just kind of pitching up at the start of the sound. If I turn it off, you can hear it's pretty subtle, but... It just adds a little bit more kind of like interestingness, I guess, to the sound. Like it just really helps to make it something other than just like a saw wave and a square wave playing at the same time. On the square wave, I also have a bit of pulse width, very similar to that second chord layer. I've got this being modulated by this LFO. So same thing as that, just kind of gives it some movement. You can hear when I turn that off and back on again. Yeah, like I said, it just really helps to bring it to life and make it less boring. I got the amp envelope set like this, just kind of like a pluck. Um, and then I've got a few things here at the end. So the first thing I have here is this vibrato, which is set like this. You can see it's pretty fast, and I've got a pretty good amount of it. This is another one of those things that just really helps to bring the sound to life. Then after that, I've got a bit of unison. Same thing there, just kind of helps make it a bit bigger and more interesting sounding. And then the last thing I have on here is this glide, and I've got this on the legato setting. So basically, you can hear these notes are all sliding in between each other. Which also helps with the kind of like intense energy. But yeah, that's what this is doing. If I turn this off. And then back on. You can hear the difference there. So then after that, I've got a bit of chorus just to give it a bit more like dimension. And kind of like that nice chorusy retro synth sound. And then I've got this audio effect rack. And what this audio effect rack is doing is basically I have two chains. So the first one is just completely dry. And then on the second one, I have this erosion. And what this erosion is doing is kind of adding that nice, like, really bright, sizzly high end on top of the sound. If you listen to the, just the dry set, the dry rack, it's very, like, it's kind of dark sounding. When we add in that erosion, we get that nice kind of bit crushed, fizzly high end. So the, the key here is just with the way I did this. So the reason why I have these as two separate chains as opposed to just having the erosion on the sound is because I wanted to high pass the erosion. If I play this without this EQ8, you can hear there's a ton of like low end and even some mid mid range in there that we wouldn't really want. But this EQ8 allows me to have just the bright high end from the erosion and then sort of blend it in 
with the mid range and still some of that high end from the original sound. So that is that. The next thing we've got here is just this echo, which is set like this. You can see I've got it on the time setting, so it's just doing milliseconds. And yeah, this is just a nice way to give it some space. I didn't want to use any reverb for this because I felt like it would take away from like the energy like I was talking about. Like a lot of times if you have reverb, you know, it can get kind of big and washed out and just kind of messy. But using echo here allows you to get some space on the sound still, but without having it be something that's going to make it super just big and kind of messy. So then, the last effect that I have on here is just an EQ8 cutting out the low end, and that's pretty much it for this one. So, yeah, I just want to show you guys some techniques. I got a bunch of requests to do a rusty tutorial, so I figured I would start with this one and see what you guys think. So, yeah, so that is it for today, guys. As always, let me know what you think of this video in the comments, and make sure to like this video, as well as subscribe. Once again, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, because they'll be available. Thank you so, so, so much, everybody. The love lately has been amazing, and all your support is really appreciated. Um, have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.